First question is for, from Lorinda6753. What is the best plan of action for gluteal amnesia? <laughs> is that, Doesn't that is, sound is official? That sleepy, is, sleepy that, is, is that sleepy butt? Yeah. Uh, gluteal. <laughs> that sounds so official, right? Yeah. So this is not an actual thing. Uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. If, you, if you go to the doctor because your butt won't grow, they're not going to diagnose you with uh, gluteal amnesia. The term Did they um, just make that up. And yeah, being isn't it cute? funny? I like that. The term that we use is sleepy butt syndrome. It's not really a syndrome, but what we're referring to is people who are trying to build their their glute muscles. They're very quad dominant. Yeah, and they're doing all the right exercises. They're doing the squats and the stiff legged deadlifts and the lunges, and for whatever reason, their butt doesn't seem to want to uh, respond. Now, there's a few reasons why this may be happening. Uh, but one of the main ones, in in I'll speak personally from my experience, is that that person just doesn't really use a lot of glutes when they do those exercises. It's usually a lot of quad. And so the plan of action, step one, is to learn how to feel the glutes. This is a this is more of a, a subjective, perceptive type thing. You're not necessarily connecting to the glutes more. Um, unless you're actually paralyzed, you're connected to the glutes. It's just learning how to feel them so you could change your form a little bit to activate them more. And the best way to do that, one of the best ways to do that is to do glute isolation movements at the beginning of your workout. Movements where you squeeze and feel the glutes activating. Then when you go do your squats, you know what to look for when you're doing the movement. Or feel right? for, right? Right. I think this is also why um, uh, Brett Contreras just like exploded with the, the hip thrust. Um, I, I think that when we didn't have anything that you could really heavy load that was like an isolation exercise for the glute before mm -hmm. that. Like everything, think about every, all the other isolation yeah. exercises for glutes. They're all like they're pretty weak. Yeah, kickbacks, dog pees, fucking weak ass movements that you can't really load. Uh, you can load a hip thrust really, really heavy, and it's you know almost an isol. It's not quite an isolation exercise. Nothing's really an isolation exercise, but but the glutes are really a, you, the a prime mover. Yeah, there. it's it's hard to do a a uh, hip thrust and not use your glutes. Mm -hmm. It really is like you you could have pretty poor mechanics on a squat and easily do a squat that looks to the average eye as good form, but be very quad dominant. Like I've seen, you know, clients squat and to the average eye you go hey that's a good looking squat yet they and they have these massive quads and a flat butt and it's just their their body is driving more off the quads because it is still a very quad dominant exercise anyway so it's mm -hmm. hard to like see that mechanically the hip thrust it's directly r right up opposing the glutes when you when you lift up from uh, the barbell on your hips and so I think that's a great movement so I think priming like you're saying uh, Sal like uh, I would love to start so like we did a good YouTube video on uh, floor bridge, um, and I I broke down like the importance of flattening the back before you lift up. So it's a really good video on that on our YouTube channel. I think priming with a movement like that, or some of the things like glute kicks or something, just to get the butt, feeling the butt a little bit of a burn in it, so you, you wake it up, you know. And the term sleepy butt or wake the butt up, it's not sleep. It's not asleep. It's not not being worked. Like that's. It's just a term that we use to explain to people that you're not working it as well as you could be in the movements that it should be taking over more. There's less recruitment happening. Yeah, exactly. So uh, doing something that connects to it well, and then like Sal was saying, now when you go into your squat, you're thinking about your butt as you do it. But I mean, this is where hip barbell hip thrusts have a ton of value to yeah. me. And this is this is something that of all strength athletes, bodybuilders are the best at. So if you want to learn how to develop a specific muscle, aesthetically speaking, what I mean by that is actually visually develop it. Look to bodybuilders. Bodybuilders are experts at this. They rarely focus on the movement. They usually focus on the muscle that they're trying to work. Now, every other strength athlete, every other athlete that uses weights, every other category does not care what muscle they feel and what muscle they're trying to develop. What they're trying to do is, is lift the weight in the most efficient, safest, most effective way possible. Whether it's you're a power lifter or an Olympic lifter or a kettlebell athlete or, or a football player who lifts weights, you're not going in there to make your glutes look nicer. You're going in there to get stronger at the movement. It's totally, totally different. So if you lift weights like somebody who is movement focused, you're going to have to move your focus from the movement and just focus on the muscle. So one of the best ways to do that is what we're talking about. If it's the glutes you have a hard time feeling, 
do an exercise before you do your squats or your deadlifts that you can actually feel the glutes. This may be tube walking. It may be, like Adam said, dog pee or donkey yeah. kickback. It may be a hip thrust. Hip bridging. Yeah. Hip bridging. You might, you might have to go light on hip thrust, by the way. I've actually worked with people where if we go too heavy on a hip thrust, they, feel it in the, they still feel it in their hamstrings, and believe it or not, in their quads. They're so quad dominant that the quads still yeah. are hip, doing- Hip flexors a lot. All that stuff. So do a movement to where you, you can actually feel the glutes working more than any other part of your body. You can feel the squeeze. You can feel the burn. Focus on the squeeze part of the movement. That's typically when whenever I've worked with a client where they have a muscle that's underdeveloped, it's they typically have a hardest time connecting to the muscle when it's in its shortened position. So focus on the squeeze, squeeze the muscle, get it to burn, get it, so to the point where you you ingrain in your mind at that moment, I know what my glutes feel like when they're active. Mm -hmm. Then go do your squat and then forget the weight. Take your weight off the bar, uh, go with light, don't worry about it, whatever, it's just a, a means to an end. Do your squat, and rather than trying to squat well, squat really good, focusing on the movement, squat in a way to where you can feel your glutes working. Typically, this means you have to go a lot lighter. You're going to have to slow down the reps. That's okay. Do this for a while. What will end up happening is you'll start to learn how to connect to your glutes. It could take a second. It could take you a couple months of training. But then when you really start to feel the glutes and it becomes more like second nature, then you can start adding weight to the bar and start lifting more and more weight. And then what you'll see is that the muscle starts to respond and react. Now, the other thing I want to say is this. Sometimes you just might have genetics where a muscle is not going to develop as well as other muscles. It might not necessarily be a connection thing, although it usually is. So what I mean by that is you, you'll see better results, but don't expect all of a sudden your glutes to explode and react like every other part of your body, you still may have a, a little bit of a tough time because you know we have different muscle shapes and and our genetics can dictate a lot of how well we respond. I to also exercise. can't I also can't see this person squatting right now either. And there's there there could be potential cues that could really help. Um, I know that uh, you know I even taught squatting bad uh, in early years of training because you know all of our certifications would talk about, you know, not letting the knees go over right. the toes. Stop and so, at 90. and so you would teach a client, like I, mean, I even remember kneeling down while they squatted and would put my hands in front, know, of their shins. in front of their shins. And as soon as they, I'd say, as soon as my, you, your knees hit my hands, you know, push your hips back and not allow their knees to travel forward. And the problem with that, like knowing now and really understanding what I was doing is I, I was not allowing their knees to travel over their toes, which then was causing them to forward lean yeah. more in order to do that. Then you, then you move the bar over the top of your quads. Even more, it makes it even more difficult to fill the glutes. So looking at your squat and seeing if you're somebody that knows how to open up the hips, let the knees travel forward so you can sit down. So when you're at the bottom of a squat, that barbell is directly over the butt and the butt is what's having to drive it up out of the hole yeah. versus somebody who let doesn't let their knees come forward slides the hips so far back only goes down to 90 the chest comes forward now the barbell is directly over almost over the knee and over the quad more than anything else and then it turns into a really it's really tough for you to feel it. and then you're trying to feel it in your butt yeah. really tough to do so the isolation exercises for the butt and then also uh, really looking at your your squat and how you are doing your squat because that can make a big difference too. Yeah, it's a good point. I totally remember like just that one inch of more depth was like game changer for a lot of my clients. And that was like, I had to then kind of break the rules a little bit and go a little past 90 sometimes. And uh, after that, I was like, man, so much more engagement there. So much more engagement. There. I feel it finally. So yeah, it could be a mechanical thing. I also like... Uh, so to, to teach somebody to, because, uh, you know, we, we're saying like, hey, after you do this, you feel your butt, then go into the squat and try and, and think and feel your butt. And some people are just, I, just, I can't do it. I can't do it. I used to love to teach a, a single leg stand up from the seated position. Uh, it's a really good spot to like engage the butt first. You'll feel when you, and I'd sit him down on just like a regular bench. And then trying to get as vertical as possible. Have you stand up with yeah. one leg? And right. when you stand up with, and you know, if you're you, if you're not strong enough to do one leg at a time, then you could start with with both, trying to get up off the bench. But this is why uh, in Maps Anabolic there is the um, in the um, preface 
you have the box squats is to get somebody to engage the glutes from the seated position like that. Uh, that used to be kind of a trainer trick to help people feel it in their glutes is start them at the bottom, tell them to push off with the heel and the butt at to get off the bench. That kind of helps you get kind of engaged with the glutes to drive out of that.